due to being busy, I haven't made um, a video for a couple of days. Um, I did, however, notice um, Mr. Webb's video about Leslie Locko, the winner of the Rebo Award. As usual, no research, Mr. Webb. And the fact you've done nothing that can be called actual research means you produced a rather hilarious video in which, despite being a Zionist, you've managed to start having a, a slap at someone who is a fellow Jewish individual, which is, to a certain extent, quite humorous. Had you actually done some research, and it only would take 10 minutes or so, you would have noticed the following facts about the woman. So let's do the five minutes of research that someone who claims to be a historian might do. And I don't even claim to be an historian, but you do, Simon. Leslie Locko is a Ghanaian but a Scottish architect, academic and novelist. From 2019 to 2020, she was professor and served as dean at the Bernard and Ann Spitzer School of Architecture in New York. Notice how Webb leaves out all these details of her qualifications and background. He just presents her as though she's some silly woman who's built what he he and his followers would characterise as a mud hut or something similar. Early life and education. Leslie was born in 1964 in Dundee, the daughter of a Ghanaian surgeon and a Scottish Jewish mother, which means Leslie is Jewish because Judaism descends through the matrilineal line and grew up in Ghana and Scotland. At age 17, she attended a private boarding school in England. She began studying Hebrew and Arabic at Oxford University, but left to go to the programme to go to the United States. She graduated from the Bartlett School of Architecture at University College London with a Bachelor of Science in Architecture in 1992 and a Master's in Architecture in 1995 and went on to earn a PhD in Architecture from the University of London in 2007. None of that appears in Webb's presentation on the woman. He basically skips all of her academic career out and skips it out. Now, if Webb keeps doing this, I will actually deliberately start researching these figures for a half an hour and an hour each time and pulling out the thesis as if he does academic figures. It's not very hard. This kind of work is stored in central databases and it's quite easily accessible. Also... For Webb's information, I'm a doctoral student myself at the University of London, and I'm from a background where it was quite hard to get in there being quite working class. You don't find too many working class doctoral students. Most of the people I'm studying with are quite nice people, but they're very white and very middle class. Decent people, people I'd happily say were among the nicest people I've ever encountered, but you will not find too many people who are EastEnders from working class backgrounds. No, will you find too many people who are black in there. Leslie comes from the, uh, what you might call the, and I hesitate to use this term because it sort of sets up annoying uh, pigeonholes, which I hate, what you might call the upper class realms of blackness in Britain. I really hate to set up such pigeonholes because I start sounding like Wim himself. Um... Webb, if you are going to talk about people, do them the courtesy of researching them, of finding something out of the back of the background. Don't dream of calling yourself an historian if you don't actually do some minimal research. What you've done is presented a few minutes video on a woman and basically used her to advance a, a lovely, another race-basing ad agenda. You had a go at me for using one archaic word about... <laughs> Jewish women, you yourself, have now managed to bash a fellow Jewish person in a way that's quite despicable. I'm going to include some links about Leslie's life and her history where people can actually learn something about her. Now, only a minimal number of people are going to read me as a opposed to Webb's pejorative rants where basically... If you're black and successful, you may forget it. Where Webb will no doubt be off on, you know, Diane Abbott, David Lammy, James Cleverly, whoever else he can find to have a pop at tomorrow morning. But even if a hundred people read it, it's something.